Hello, everyone. My name is Matt Dixon, and you are listening to The Graphics Profiles, the official podcast of the Graphics Pro Magazine, Expo, and Newsletter, covering every aspect of the graphics industry live, in print, and online. My guest this month is Matt Baker of Baker Signs in Houston. Matt is a third-generation sign guy and an all-around Texan. He's a passionate advocate for the overall betterment of the sign industry and has a vast knowledge and understanding of the full cycle of our industry. He's always pushing to move the ball forward. But before we get started today, let's take a quick minute to hear from this month's sponsor, Gemini. Like a website, illuminated signage is a potent form of communication. In an attention economy, nothing turns heads and drives more business than lit signage. Now is the time to make illuminated signage a bigger part of your business. The signage experts at Gemini Inc. can help you leverage lit signage to generate more revenues for your sign shop. Visit GeminiMade.com to learn how Gemini lit signage can help you grow your business. Thank you very much for joining us today, Matt. How are you doing today? I'm doing phenomenal. How about yourself? Happy Friday Eve to you. Thank you very much. Uh, so you are uh, with Baker Signs just north of Houston. That's and correct. Obviously, obviously, the uh, the last name is your last name, so that is yours. How? What? Tell me the story of Baker Signs and how long you've been involved. Okay. Yeah. So our, our company name is is Baker Signing Manufacturing Incorporated, um, and we are based out of Conroe, Texas. It's approximately a 30 minute drive north of Houston, Texas. Um, myself personally, I'm a, I'm a third generation sign guy. My, uh, my grandfather was actually a, a painter back in the day when, when, when it was all hand done on porcelain and, and, and the painters had, were very highly regarded, um, back in those days. Um, from there, my, my mom and dad had actually met at a sign company. Uh, you know, my dad was in the field on a truck. My mom was in sales and the year, I was born in 86. They had uh, started our sign company. Um, you know, fast forward 36 years later, you know, my mom, um, my mom and dad have actually, they, they separated about halfway through that journey, unfortunately. Um, my dad is still involved in the sign industry, but my mom was, uh, she was, she was awarded the company within, within their separating. And um, so she went on to, to build the company and run the company by herself for many years. And then fast forward to where we're at today, again, 36, 37 years later, um, myself, and I've got um, both of my brothers, actually, we're all partners in the business. One brother is involved in the daily operations um, with me every day. So, you know, my, my, my mom, her, her water broke actually at the city of Houston sign administration office when I was, when I was being, being born. So to say I was literally born into the sign industry, um, you know, is a, is a, is a true statement there. Now you say your family uh, is, it's a family business, but this is pretty far from a mom and pop shop. This is a pretty good sized operation. Yes, you know, I mean, in terms of the operation, while we come from very humble beginnings, I mean, we, it seemed like it was just yesterday, you know, that we were, we were literally in a, in an 800 square foot office, we were crammed elbows to elbows in cubicles, and there wasn't one thing in, in there that the rest of us didn't know about. So, you know, coming, coming from beginnings like that, we still have that small mom and pop feel throughout our entire company, but the magnitude of, of our operation compared to where we we're at in those days compared to where we we're at today is definitely significantly different. However, I think the the the, the mindset of how we of how we operate even today's age is 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 very similar in that. But yes, no, in terms of the magnitude of the operation, uh, it's definitely tenfold plus from 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 where we were at that time. But um, something that we're, we're still excited about. You know, we feel we still feel as though it, that we're, we're just getting started in that aspect. So what do you think your grandfather would think of your operation now if he were to come in and try to run it? Man, I, I don't want to say that he would he would be speechless. Um, the, the technology today, computer stuff of that nature. I mean, that was stuff that you know, my grandfather was not involved in, you know, and he was, again, as a painter, he was, he was, he was main, mainly in the shop. I think, I think my grandfather could bring a lot of, um, a lot of benefit to, to our production team as a whole. And in regards to the whole company as a whole, I, I think speechless would probably be a good term for it. Speechless, but yet, you know, again, proud um, of, of something that maybe, you know, at least in terms of the trajectory that he had a pivotal role in within our family. So. Can you kind of give me an idea of uh, what kind of equipment 
uh, your shop is working with these days? Well, man, I mean, in terms of our shop specifically, you know, our company, you know, I, I think regionally, nationally, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of known for our installation field muscle, right? Whereas, I mean, a third of our business is maintenance and repair work. A third of our business is going to be installation work in the field. And then the other third of our business is comprised of the manufacturing aspect of things. So, um, you know, our shop, I think we boast 40, 50,000 square foot right now. And I think we're about to, we're adding something in the neighborhood of, of, of double that. We're actually supposed to be breaking ground here in about the next three to four weeks. So the, the shop is, you know, within within the, the, the equipment and the tools and the processes in the shop from, you know, from the, from the, 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 the automat, you know, automated um, channel letter benders to the CNC routers, to the, the, the welding equipment today, the overhead cranes, um, paint boosts, the paint mixing technology, um, you know, for, it's, it, it seems like it's a, and especially over the last 10 years, it seems like it, we, we get to a point to where we feel like we're on top of our game. And then once we get there, then there's some changes or some new introductions of, of stuff in the market. So, you know, we, while we feel we're, we're at the top of our game from that aspect, we have some plans in place here within the next six months to a year to really move that ball forward. Now let's take a quick break to hear from this month's sponsor, Gemini. What do customers love? If you answered options, you'd be right. In today's attention economy, attracting eyeballs to your business is job number one. That's why you should go with Gemini Illuminated Signage, high quality and options galore. Because when it comes to signage, Gemini understands the power of using lit signage to communicate a brand. Visit GeminiMade.com to learn how Gemini lit signage can help you grow your business. We're back here with Matt Baker of Baker Signs. Uh, looking back just a little bit over the years, what would you say that the biggest change you've had to make at your shop has been to adjust to market trends? You know, I mean, within our within our shop or our company specifically, and I don't know if it's mainly, I don't know if it's so much to do with market trends, but just in terms of um, really, really the way that we think, you know, coming from coming from the, the, the mom and pop, you know, doing, you know, uh, you know, we're, we're operating on million, $2 million a year in terms of annual production to, to, to the, the rate of which we grew to, to the level we're at now and still growing at a very rapid rate. I think it was more so just the, the challenge and challenging ourselves individually within our mindset and, and maybe some things that processes that, that we had accepted that were our normal but letting go of those, you know, um, assigning assigning duties, being able to let go of certain aspects of the business and trust within the people that we've brought on the team to be able to handle those in an aspect that we were, but we're not so much directly involved in that process. So I think as the business grew, as our as our volume grew, as the 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 the, the job um, the jobs that we needed fulfilled, the delegating of certain processes. I think if anything, you know, making making sure we're putting the right people in the right places first and foremost. But outside that, what was probably more of a challenge for us as a company is is upper management, ownership, the executive team being able to let go fully of those of those you know those those duties and trusting within our team. And again, you know. Um, you know, God is God is good from that aspect, man. We we really rely a lot on faith within our company, and we feel we we surround ourselves with the with the best people that we could at any given time. And then, you know, again, the challenge is us is just letting them letting them do their jobs. And and from that aspect, it's it seems that once we the more that we we rely on them to do their jobs, and the more that we give them the space, the resources, the knowledge, and the the ability to really feel good about what it is that they're doing. It's all, you know, it's almost like uh, igniting a bonfire for se. Yeah, labor issues and everything, finding the right people, that, that's a, a business wide across the country type of issue. Um, but between that and supply chain stuff uh, that affect businesses, what advice can you give to other companies to find those right people and to get past those obstacles? You know, and I think in terms of, you know, and I'm involved in, in both local, regional, um, state and, and, and international associations, specifically, you know, surrounding that of the sign industry. And I, I think especially within the last couple of years, the, the, the labor shortages and then some of the supply chain 
um, you know, hurdles that, that, that we've been faced with is, is, you know, we're dealing with problems on, on that level within the market that, that we have never seen before, at least since I've been involved in the sign industry. But with that, you know, I truly think that there's an upside to every downside, right? I think within, you know, the last two years, have we had a higher turnover rate than what we've been accustomed to prior to that? Yes. But how we analyze that was, you know, really, we're, we're, we're a company built on commitment. And, and within that commitment, it's like, you know, we want people that want to be here. And if you don't want to be here, you know, we, we actually, we implemented a policy where we will give people a paid day off to go find another job if they're not happy with the one that they have with us. But then the expectation is once you, once you take that paid day off and, and that's the, the, the route that you want to at least explore when you come back to us, the, the understanding and the expectation is that, hey, um, either you, you got to jump ship or you're on this ship and this is and this is the understanding that we have. So, so from that aspect, man, it's really, it's gave us the ability to vet the team that we have and, and, and we want like-minded people on the team, right? So, so it was, it was a blessing in the aspect of we were able to vet within the labor force that we had in terms of who is really committed, who is really here for the long haul, regardless of, you know, the social or, you know, the, the what, whatever front it is that we're working under at that point. So, you know, it was, we, we looked at it as, 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 as a pro instead of a con within, within that, but then within attracting and retaining good help. You know, it's almost, you know, it's almost, I'm not going to say well, marketing for, for sign companies is a big deal, but marketing is, is, is second, third, fourth down the list in regards to really all the emphasis that we have. We want to put all emphasis on making sure that we are giving our, our clients and our employees the absolute best bang for their buck across the board, right? And I think that's where within the committed group that we have, it gave us as a company the ability to shine because in 37 years of business, we have never laid anyone off, right? Throughout this COVID, you know, all, all this, we we have not, we have not cut hours, right? We we have continued to give raises at a rate that are probably better than the years prior. And the reason we had the ability to do that because our profit margins were better than the years prior. So it's really put your money where your mouth is, do what you say, say what you do, run your company is, is, is through, through the, through the, through the mind of an employee. And while am I one of the owners here? Yes. But how I evaluate myself is I'm an employee. I'm a pea in a pot. I want, I want to be able to give our employees everything out of this company that I would, that I personally would want out of this company. Cause that's what it's all about. So, you know, it's, it's really, I think, defining digging deep within your culture within your ethics your morals and your values and that's a double-edged sword but as a company once we once once we were kind of thrusted into the the front that we're in today that we're kind of talking about within these shortages both on the labor side as well as on the material process side etc um, to where we could stay, we could stay flexible, we could stay, you know, um, in, uh, approachable and in demand from that aspect. So, uh, you know, really just put, put all emphasis on making sure that you are the best company in the eyes of your, your, your clients and your employees and, and put all emphasis there. And, and it really comes down to the golden rule, simply do on to other people as you want others to do on to you. As a, as a signed company, you know, what does it mean to be a sign guy going uh, into the future? And where do you see the growth coming from? Well, man, I, you know, I think today within the sign industry as a whole across the entire country is one of the most it's it's one of the most exciting times to be associated with this industry. While we're dealing with challenges that we've never that we've never experienced before, I think within those challenges on the on the flip side of the coin there that there's also some, you know, there's some there's some some potential uh, and again, nation nationwide, some potential within our industry that is mind blowing. You know, I, I've, I've always been a, I've always been a, a believer um, in, in terms of the, the sign industry as a whole not being a viable career option, right? Even myself as a third generation sign guy. I didn't think is the sign industry is a viable career option until it 
came time that I needed to find a viable career option, right? And, and, and I was blessed with the opportunity that my mom had a sign company at that time and that, and that kind of gave me a leg up there. But within the exposure, I think through technology and, and just the job markets as a whole that, that us as an industry have at our fingertips at this point for the trajectory that a lot of people within the industry have taken within positive promoting of the industry, um, that's huge, man. So I think, you know, I think in terms of um, future growth, the, the, the possibilities are endless. You know, I think industry wise, especially here within the state of Texas, the Houston market, there's been big, large conglomerate um, sign companies. And if these companies bought out by investment companies or whatever, whatever it is that have dominated the front for, for a long period of time, right? But within, within the front that we're now faced with and the challenges that a lot of those larger companies um, might have went through within these last several years, I think this has given um, opportunity to new new beliefs, new talents, new new thought processes, new ways of structuring companies to where, you know, you see a lot of companies that are having very challenging times right now, but you see a lot of other companies that are that are feasting like they've never feasted before. And I think that in terms of that trend, that's that's going to continue. So it's just a matter of, again, we're kind of evaluating your strong suits and your weaknesses, you know, capitalizing on the strong suits, doing what you can to make up the weaknesses and, and stick and simply stick into the script of good business and the sign industry. I'm a believer that it is impossible to lose. So, you know, um, it's exciting from that aspect. And I just have one more question for you today. And that's uh, if you had a wish list of things that you could change about today's sign creation process from the bid to the installation, uh, what makes the top of that list? Man, you know, and I don't know if it would be so much changes with the sign creation process, right? Because I think in, in, in business as a whole, I mean, we, we have an ornate way of uh, we're going to find the most effective um, effective process or, or you know, or w- w- whatever project it is we're working on, we're going to put the best people that we have on it. We're going to put the best technology and equipment that we have on it. And that is that is going to be what it's going to be, right? I, I think in terms of the, if I could change anything about the sign industry today, I don't want to say it's almost like a, a dog eat dog world out there, but I what I've noticed within my time and getting involved in these associations and talking to other sign companies, I, I feel it's very, if we were to almost be able to, to, to look through a perspective of, of just neighbors, right? How would you treat your neighbor that lives next door to you? If, if, if all of us in the, involved in the sign industry, if we were to simply look through glasses of, I want to do one to others is I want others to do one to me within, within our industry being a, a, a more of a, you know, it would be a lot more sought after, right? If we, if we were to keep emphasis on good business, right? Even local competition here within the Houston market, I have got more business out of going out of my way to help some of my competition with the expectation of nothing in return, right? If this was trade secrets or pricing or, or they're just coming up short on a job and I have the ability to help them, I help them, right? And I have gotten more business from my competition in helping them than I've ever lost business within them, right? So I think within, within sign company owners, managers, the executive team, if we were to really start instead of instead of almost hoarding and us operating like everybody else is fenced off and it's just it's just a, you know a very a very narrow perspective and that's what I see a lot of a lot of companies operating with but if we can make that slight change to simply do on to others as we want others to do on to us I think the our profit margins within our industry I think the labor shortage within the industry Um, And just overall being an industry that people want to be a part of could have some huge collateral benefit to it. Thank you so much to Matt Baker for joining me today. Be sure to check out BakerScience.com to see examples of his work and processes. I'd also like to thank this month's sponsor, Gemini. Visit GeminiMade.com. You can catch all of our previous graphics profiles, episodes, and tune into new episodes by subscribing to our show on SoundCloud, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts. New episodes come out every month, and if there's a topic you'd like us to discuss, drop me a line. My contact information is in the show notes of today's episode. Until then, stay safe, and best of luck in business.